Hi, my name is Pascal, and this is work uh, I have conducted together with Maximilian Altmaier and Nicolas Braun at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Uh, before I deep dive into the paper, let me give you some kind of context. Uh, in 2014, maybe, yeah. In 2014, the game Please Be Nice appeared. And Please Be Nice uh, was an interesting game. You could download it and could play it. And it was pretty simple. You needed to move the red rectangle to the designated area. Hmm. Not much of a game. But the interesting part was the first player that beats this game was allowed to provide a new feature request that was realized and uh, on the next day the game was available again. So the player base could alter the game. Um, the important part here was that the developers aimed for daily release cycles and they said, okay, focus please on games. And the only rule, the game itself, and the only rule was please be nice. Uh, and we um, found it interesting, if you see these screenshots, you can see that the game got crazy really fast. And basically, we asked ourselves the question, uh, can we repeat that? Can we uh, analyze it scientifically? So we would start with a rudimentary game, and we would see how the players would alter the game altogether. And we come up with CrowdJump. It's a simple platform game. It's available online, so no need to download anything. And we also aim for daily release cycles. The thing that changed uh, for us was that we not just said that the winning player could uh, suggest a new feature. Instead, everyone that plays CrowdChamp could suggest features. And there was an up and down voting mechanism, meaning the complete player base could decide what they want to have next. Um, and the ideas could co cover basically everything. The web page where we served CrowdChamp, the game, but also, of course, the way we select features. So uh, we wanted to be really um, open for the player base and would give them a lot of freedom. And we really started with a rudimentary game. Here you can see a platformer game. Uh, you could beat this one level in a couple of seconds. Um, and you, had, uh, you can control it with the, the arrow keys. And you had a nice little nasty jumping sound. That's it. And also the web page was quite rudimentary. Here you can see in a screenshot of the ideas page. You could filter for ideas. You could search for ideas. And basically, the ideas similar to the Please Be Nice approach could only be formulated textually. Um, here you could up and downward, and the only thing that I want to stress here is that we, for every idea we provided an estimation for how long we think that we need for realization. Um, we stick with a release cycle, meaning that we release a new game always uh, at 7 p.m. in the evening because we thought, okay, uh, people will then have time to play the game. But nonetheless, we provided an estimation. If they wanted to have a feature that took two weeks, they would know it up front before they select it, basically. Uh, we conducted two studies with CrowdJump, one pilot study, one main study, and uh, due to the time, I can only elaborate on the main study. We had 25 participants that played CrowdJump over 23 days, and the only reason to play or to participate in the study was the game, so we had no compensation whatsoever. Um, the pilot study showed us that we could basically release two features per day, so not just one, and more features was good for us because we wanted to see how the whole thing evolves. Um, by considering these 25 participants, it, is, uh, um, it became obvious that we had 12 really active players. These filled out also closing questionnaires. We had an age bias and we had a gender bias. Um, and interestingly, 10 of these 12 participants had designed an application already, but just one uh, had designed a video game. Um, additionally, they had mixed feelings about platformer games in general, so our sample was not uh, consisting of just players that like platformer games or those that don't, so this was quite okay. Um, I will now show you some screenshots how CrowdJump evolved. Uh, until day eight, we had a lot of uh, game mechanics added to the game. We had power-ups, we had a high score list so that p uh, participants, players could um, compare uh, each other. We had bigger levels, custom avatars. Until day 15, we had more aesthetic changes. We had music, we had background, um, a nice little looking background. We had even more levels, even longer levels. And um, until the last day, we had even more game mechanics um, and more animated graphics. And the nice thing is that we provided a, a supplementary video figure where you can see every feature that was, was released every day um, so that you can get a real overview about what, was, what happened in the game. Um, interestingly enough, um, now to beat the game, you needed the best uh, time was roughly three minutes, uh, but only 6% of all tries resulted in a successful game. So the game got harder. Um, overall, we had 43 ideas realized in this time frame, and 
considering our estimations, the important part was that our estimations in many cases were correct and uh, pessimistic in many other cases. That means people could basically rely on us if we say it will took that long. In most cases, uh, it took that long or we were a bit faster. Um, considering the estimations, overall we estimated 137 hours, but we just needed 106 to realize all the features that got selected. Overall, considering that we wanted to release two features per day at 7 p.m., on 19 days we were, we were able to do this. Yeah? In the other days, we just uh, could release one feature, but on the next day we could even release three features. So overall, people could rely on our estimation. You know, on the next day, there will be some, some new content in the game. Um, and people also stated that um, the features were realized as they had imagined, basically. Um, from a results perspective, nearly 13,000 plays were done. Uh, we had an overperformer that um, played um, more than 6,000 uh, times, yeah? uh, but the median was also quite okay with uh, 400. Yeah? Um, we had 138 ideas suggestions, we had a couple of upvotes, a couple of downvotes, and what we learned is that two feature realizations per day seemed to be good. So the samples stated that there were not too many ideas realized and not um, that they wanted to have even more ideas realized. But what they stated was that they really had the issue that they were overhemmed by the sheer amount of suggestions that were provided. And that is interesting because basically they had have the chance to say, we want to have another system. They could propose something else that would help them to crawl through all these ideas, but they didn't have it. Uh, so this is an interesting result. Uh, overall, though, participants agreed that the game, the web page, and the idea selection process has been developed in a positive direction during the study. Overall, uh, participants also stated to like the idea of CrowdChamp, they tended to like uh, the, the, the option to submit new ideas, and they enjoyed playing CrowdChamp. So overall, we would uh, reason that, given these numbers, um, that, the, that providing players with such an autonomy is an interesting uh, aspect that should be considered. Another thing that was interesting for us is that um, the idea selection process did not change in the study. And uh, if you ask participants whether or not they acted as a community or team, um, we learned that this wasn't the case. So participants thought um, that they had no, uh, that there was no teamwork or no community. And that was interesting because we would have assumed that they would start with ideas that basically facilitate that. And it is interesting that at day 10, they uh, upvoted a comment feature. So they wanted to comment on other ideas, but overall it was only used 25, uh, only 25 comments were written overall. So they acted solitarily. And also interesting is that they, that the player stated that they had the feeling that nobody else interfered with the development. So we had also no trolling tendencies. So it seems that in this uh, experience, players acted as single players and didn't uh, wanted to have um, idea, an idea selection process where they could come up um, together with a better uh, next iteration cycle. And finally, uh, what we also saw is that um, participants uh, wanted to improve the game a lot. So if you consider the suggested ideas, a lot of these ideas cover the game aesthetics or the game itself. And even if you uh, uh, see the uh, implemented ideas, more than 75% covered the game. So this was clearly the most important part here. Uh, we, of course, had other uh, results. We found that ideas that were shorter got more likely got, uh, picked or that we that recent ideas were more likely selected so they didn't go through all the old ideas again. And as I said before, there was no significant change on the idea selection process. This can only be the first step. So we thought it is interesting to look more into this in this player-driven game development. And the first thing we want to do is uh, to find out why is it cool? Is it the autonomy? People have the chance to provide new features? Or is it more the ownership that you know certain features are in the game because you suggested it? Or is it even the case that we might generate a better platformer game if the players decide what they want compared to other platformers that had just 23 days of a realization? I don't know. We will see that. Another thing is that it's interesting that we could analyze a typical genre pattern. Now we know potentially atomic features in a platformer game. Maybe in the same sense we could find out uh, such atomic features in ego shooters or other uh, genre. And finally, of course, it will be interesting to see if we change the voting scheme, the way we uh, se select ideas, um, whether we will have different results and whether the community starts to select in this voting process. And with this, I'm happy to take questions. I was like, before the time. So you have more time to ask your questions. Thank you. Up 
Hi, uh, Dennis from National University of Singapore. Um, I was just interested uh, because I, I have a little bit of um, experience with player you know, driven systems. Have you come across um, any indication of your players that upvoted or downvoted the uh, request features, right? Um, do you know that they are all different players or have people attempted to game the system by, you know, maybe like creating different accounts to, to upvote their own ideas and so on? Uh, in, in our case, uh, we had all, all the participants had individual accounts, so there was no double account. Yeah, we checked for that. So uh, you were able to identify the participants? Yeah, yeah we, we basically knew the 25 participants, yeah, so there were no double. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Kieran Hicks, University of Lincoln, England. So first of all, thanks for the great talk. I really enjoyed that. Um, and so I was just kind of curious. As it went on, it seemed the game kind of uh, grew in complexity and difficulty with the completion time like, growing exponentially. And I wondered, did you get any requests to like, remove features or to start making it easier? Or was it always to make the game harder? Yeah, uh, you will find details on that in the paper due to the time I couldn't elaborate on that. Uh, we had um, two interesting uh, occasions. First, the, the, the crowd stated that they want to have more challenge, so then it ramped up. But interestingly, on one day, we, as we realized two features per day, we had um, concurring features, con uh, meaning one half of the player base stated we needed an easier game and wanted to have multiple difficulty levels, so starting from easy, so you could select easy, medium, hard. The other half stated it is too easy. We needed to make it even harder. Yeah? So uh, this was interesting to see at the very same day, yeah? and we provided them both. So yes, there were cases where uh, certain features got, um, um, got easier. Yeah? Um, my question is about the how, how was the empowerment to actually influence the the game distributed across the players? Do you notice if they all have been able to influence the outcome, or is is there a, a small group that that becomes smaller and smaller? Or um, we had a question on that, so at least the player base uh, of the active players had the feeling that everyone could contribute if they wanted. And that the same was also true for the pilot study. Yeah? So uh, this is, was also interesting to see that there was no group that stated, okay, I wouldn't, wanted to put in ideas, but they were, got never selected. But my feeling is if you do this study again with more participants, you will clearly have such a thing. Yeah? Because if you really realize only two ideas per day, I think there will be people that provide suggestions that got never picked. Yeah? So I think this could be just because we had so little uh, participants. Yeah. Uh, hi, Stuart Halifax, the University of Lyon 3 in France, uh, up here. Uh, I'm interested to sort of get your idea about what was the, if you could, if you could pick one feature that surprised you the most that came out of the users, and um, one feature, you, you said that you could output about two new features a day. Uh, which was the one feature that took you guys the longest to input? Uh, from the okay, um, so actually, one feature that really um, was interesting for me was a feature that just took 10 seconds to fix. Uh, people stated that on the web page, these up and download buttons were not vivid enough. So they just upvoted one thing to make the color different. So this was interesting. Yeah, it was good for us because it was easy for us to fix. Um, but yes, so they certainly they stated that this was so important for them that it needs to be fixed. Um, and I guess all the features that we had in in the end um, that took eight hours at maximum. Yeah. But what I needed to say, I also didn't um, elaborate it on the talk. We had certain features where we said we think that we cannot realize that in time for the study. Yeah. So. In theory, they, they had to complete freedom, but in this particular study, it's a clear limitation. At certain features, we needed to state it would took too long so that you wouldn't that we wouldn't see other features. Yeah. Let's thank uh, Pascal again. <laughs>